Welcome into KSL Sports Rewind, Dusty Lister and Dane Stewart, as always, presented by Heidemann and Associates. Yeah, that's right. Just a reminder, if you have any legal needs, be it business, personal, want to set up a living will and trust, no one better or more experienced to help you through that than Justin Heidemann and Associates. They'll walk you through everything, make sure you understand it, customize to whatever your situation needs. If you have any legal needs, contact the experts at Heidemann Associates. Call 801-754-4240. And as always, brought to you by Western Governors University as well. We, talk, we keep talking about Big 2022, the year of you. And now, as my new slogan is, I did this for them. I haven't gotten approved. Okay. I'm not worried about approval. Be like Dane. Get an MBA. <laughs> you can get it through WGU <laughs> in one year. Get it done at your own time, your own pace. And you don't have to break the bank to do it. Yeah. But you want to be like Dane. Get your MBA, Master's a business through WGU. Although he went to Arizona State. He did. He did. WGU has a better football program right now. They don't even have one. So <laughs> We're not talking college football. Way to go fighting owls. We're not doing that. Uh, <laughs> let's... <laughs> <laughs> in, the video, in this video, we're talking about 6A and 5A. We have our other video with 4A, 3A, 2A, and 1A. Really what we wanted to do is give enough time to the games because, wow, Good ones. the yeah. second round Man. delivered and delivered in a big way. Now, some games might not get as much attention as others, but you'll understand why as yeah. we go forward. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's go straight into 6A, and we'll try to – I'm trying to remember off the top of the left to right, but uh, – how about Layton and Corner Canyon? Not a lot to say to this one. Corner Canyon got on early, got on yeah. after him quickly. But Jackson Arms, this is a kid. It wasn't just take care, but he had Arms, Care, Hale, all had touchdown catches. McKay Briggs had a phone recovery return for a touchdown. Isaac Wilson, second half of the year, it's been Isaac's world. Croc, add a kid, baby. Uh, look, you talk about this Corner Canyon team, Dusty, and the, the progression from early in the year to – where we're at now. I mean, I think early in the year it was, yeah, this is going to be a bit of a building year for yeah. Corner Canyon, right? And if they could get a state championship, that'd be a cherry on the top. This is a state championship contender. Obviously the number one seed. Everyone's like, Dane, you're an idiot. I'm sure that's probably true. Uh, just a reminder, you want to be like me, Western Governors University <laughs> NBA. Uh, but, you know, the, the interesting thing about it is you talk about the progression of Wilson, though. I mean, he feels so much more comfortable, yeah. right? More reps, first season, full-time starter. And you see that experience come through, and you look at a guy like Drew Patterson, you didn't list there. Kind of the Swiss Army knife can do everything for this Corner Canyon offense. And I love that they're finding guys beyond take care Love Tate. Yeah. We love the Care family, but but what has made Corner Canyon so good over recent years has been they've had a multitude of options, and they're getting that. It's a scary time to play Corner Canyon right now because it feels like everything's clicking yeah. for the Chargers. How about uh, Quinn Hale's kind of becoming the the king wide yeah. kind of version of wide receivers? Yeah. Like, hey, we'll take it away. Arms will take away. Care. Uh oh, there goes Quinn <laughs> Hale. <laughs> you got him. Right. <laughs> it's really yeah. good. But a big big win for Corner Canyon run away and and late in a, an up and down year. But we'll see if the Lancers yeah. come back next year. Yeah. How about American Fork? It was. Uh, Jackson gets this Lincoln Jackson gets to start. Funny enough, JT Wishersill was talking with guys before. They didn't tell him. <laughs> he didn't know. And also here comes oh. Lincoln Jackson. His first pass of the night was a touchdown pass to Trey Roberts, but this was all AF. It was four passing touchdowns for Jackson to four different receivers. Watson Segura had rushing touchdowns. That defense of AF, we talked about in our bracketology last week, best scoring defense in the program in the last 20 years, did not allow points to Mountain Ridge until the fourth quarter when that game was well in hand. This AF group, this team is different. It's yeah. built different, and it will be interesting to see if they can have a different result in the state tournament this season. Yeah, and for Mountain Ridge, again, Mike Mayfu continue to build those yes. building blocks, building yeah. blocks, and Potato yeah. Olave. Best of luck at Cal. Congratulations. Yeah. Be a, yeah. you know, Kenny Kinney, we'll have other guys in SIA as yeah. well. well. We'll see where those uh, commitments come in, but uh, congratulations to them. And then how about uh, Sky Ridge comes in and didn't, again, didn't say McKay, did not see McKay Hillstead. Don't know if we will see him. They didn't need him. Trent Call answered the call, and, uh, and he delivered in a big way as Skyridge ran past Fremont yeah. for the second time this year. Yeah, very similar to the first matchup, right? Just overpowered offensively, defensively. Uh, too much talent for, for Fremont to be able to keep up with this Skyridge group. Uh, Skyridge might get their first test of the playoffs in the quarters. Obviously, they just had the, the second-round game, a first-round bye. Uh, it'll be interesting to see, Dusty, if at what point, if – McKay does come back. We talked about that last week. But Trent Call, I, I love what they've built around him, how they've supported him, the starting quarterback, as they've worked through that Hillstead injury. Uh, that defense is going to keep him in every game. Uh, only one guy scored two touchdowns in this game. That was Josh Davis, yeah. ground and through the air. So a uh, very balanced attack as well. Now to what could be the game of the night. This is going to be one of the ones that – this is why not all games you can get all the time they're going to get. How about Davis and Riverton? Yeah. Folks – did not go to overtime. 55 to 50. Davis 
holding serve at home, making me look bad. Good job. Congratulations, Jackson Stevens and crew. Hey, we got some notes on this one, all right? First of all, we mentioned last week, Davis had never lost to Riverton. They were 4-0. and Make it 5-0 and well. now after that second round win. But how about this? 55 points. Davis does not score 55 points. You want to know the last time they scored 55 points? I want to know. Do you have any is a, idea? Is it a fun fact? It's a super fun fact, I love Dusty. super fun facts. Um, let's see, 1983. Ah, 1992. Oh. 1992, it was a 55-24 win over Northridge. The last time they hit 50 was in the state championship game in 2004 against Cottonwood. There's not an offense that puts up 50 points. Heck of a game for Jackson Stevens. That was the year Stevens. I got my Weeblos. <laughs> Congratulations. Did you get your arrow of light as well? I did. Congratulations. <laughs> Big year for Davis and Dusty. Uh, but, man, you look at Stevens, 450 yards passing, four passing touchdowns. How about the receiving core? We talk about all the receiving options that have been at Corner Canyon. And I got a couple guys that would fit in quite well at Charger yeah. Nation. Tyson Elkins, 12 receptions, 173 yards, and a receiving touchdown. Caden Eggett, eight receptions, 123 yards, three receiving touchdowns. The air show at Davis High School was in full force on Friday night. And look, this is a tough loss for Riverton. Yeah. It's not often you score 50 and lose. Yeah. Uh, one of the best offensive performances we've seen under Coach Morgan in quite some time. Jake Myers, 389 passing, five passing touchdowns, but just not enough as Davis in the offensive show of the night takes care of business. And how about this? I think it was only second to the greatest win in state championship football history in the state of Utah where Manti beat Emory 55-52 in regulation yeah. Yeah. in 1985. The best win in Utah high school football <laughs> history. Um, but yeah, Greg Sterner <laughs> supplying that note yeah. uh, on Twitter. But yeah, Davis, hey, congratulations to yeah. Davis. And Judy Morgan and, and the Silver Wolves, I know they were working to this year. It was still a great year yep. for the Silver Wolves. Yep. And, uh, but Davis, bouncing back in a big way. way this year started where it is now. They now get to go to Sky Ridge. How good are you? Yeah, we're going to find out. We're going to find out real yep. quick. And we'll yep. have that game right here on kslsports.com on the Rewind Sports Network. Um, all right. How about Bingham and PG? PG, it felt like they had it. Yeah. Staffieri comes out, plays really, really well. And then the Miners in the third and fourth quarter, they have a full two 20 yard run. And then Dal Martinez gets it down with his legs as well as Bingham took a scare from PG, but they hang on 28 to 20. We said 1956, the last time PG had beaten Bingham through three quarters. It looked like that was going to change yeah. to 2022, but the minor, that offense in the fourth quarter, uh, they scored the final 14 points of the game. Dallin Martinez had a passing touchdown, a rushing touchdown. Uh, Javea Fotu had two rushing touchdowns for the minors as they come from behind. Man, PG, what an improvement. Yes. I, I mean, yes. this does not look like the PG teams the last couple of years. And, look, you don't have to go that far back to see PG making playoff runs and winning. USC you know, quarterback Jake Jensen. Right, right. Um, great to see that program back competing and winning playoff games, competing in playoff games. It's going to be fun. See will, PG back in Region 4, valiant effort, but just coming up short. And here's the thing for PG. They're all coming back. Yeah, Almost every one of them, them are, are coming back because they were all sophomores last year, got beat up this year, juniors. Yeah. So a lot of this firepower is going to be back for uh, Coach Walkenhurst next year. But uh, to Coach Jones, congratulations. Yeah. First playoff win, and uh, and they move on. Who do they get? It was a thriller to find out. How about Lone Peak and Syracuse right here on KSL Sports, a game night live game of the week. Lone Peak had been licking their wounds, trying to figure out how to get things done, and it was the defense setting up the offense as Lone Peak came from behind to win 22 to 17 at Syracuse. Yeah, Lone, Lone Peak scored the final 15 points of the contest. Hodson had three passing touchdowns, including the game winner to Trey Robinson. About four minutes to go in the game. Syracuse, they're trying to get a play late get a, a late touchdown to win it, picked off in the end zone, Lone Peak able to run out the time. We mentioned in that game, Dusty, big items, uh, Syracuse was 0-2 when they had scored less than 26, mm. now 0-3, and, and we mentioned Lone Peak. When that defense allows less than 21, 6-1, now 7-1, those two areas proved to be pivotal uh, in the outcome of this game. Lone Peak, they fell down in this game 10-0, and we talk about graduating so much talent off last year's state championship squad. Love the resolve on yeah. the road, coming from behind, getting that win. We'll see if that can continue to pay dividends for this group as, as they continue to get better week over week as well. Yeah, so Lone Peak versus Bingham. What is this, 2016? Yeah. yeah it's going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it may be. Our it may be. The, just maybe. Maybe. The, the uh, rewind game of the week. Yeah, with, yeah. 
Moose and Dane. If not, Dusty and Jeff will be there. That'll be fun, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Farmington and Weber a rematch, Region 1. Yep. This one was all <clears throat> Phoenix. Yeah, 22-0 second half in this one. Easton White with three passing touchdowns. Uh, look, love the first round upset for Weber over Roy. Congratulations. Tough year for the Warriors, right? Had to battle through so many injuries, and things just never kind of gelled the way that, you know, they had in recent years. And um, Tough. Tough to deal with Farmington. The Phoenix getting the win and advancing. Yeah, they go on to go play at American Fork. That yep. game will be at 3 p.m. On, uh, on Friday. All right, uh, so, so much fun. Then to the last game here in 6A West. Just all over West Jordan, yeah. going to earn their way to Corner Canyon. Yeah, Suisui, how about this, Dusty? He had over, he, I don't know the official stats, but he had over 130 yards rushing in the first five and a half minutes. Mm. Two big <laughs> rushing touchdowns for Isaiah Suisui against West Jordan on the road. Uh, ended up with three rushing touchdowns and a passing touchdown. We'll see if that offense can keep that momentum, that rhythm, as they'll take on the top-seeded Corner Canyon Chargers. Yeah, West and Corner Canyon be right here on KSL Sports on the Rewind Sports Network. So 6A, remember those matchups. We have uh, West versus Corner Canyon. Uh, Davis, or pardon me, it is uh, American Fork versus um, uh, Farmington. Sky Ridge versus Davis. Bingham versus Lone Peak. And uh, West at Corner Canyon. I already mentioned that one. So a lot of fun. Now let's look at 5A. Whew, we'll take a deep breath. Yeah, this is, lot. this is where um, upsets occurred, huh? Yeah. Uh, first of all, when teams listen, now if they got the message or not, I don't care. I know if Dak Sumco watches this show. <laughs> Max Sumco, he watches this show. White tops, purple bottoms, get a win. I know Justin Hyden is mad at me for bringing this up. But either way, how about the Bees go into Provo, yeah. avenging the overtime loss, get a 24-21 win, and the white tops, purple bottoms look sharp, boys. They look sharp on their way to a win. Box Elder scores the final 10 points of the game. Cole Mortensen, go, go, gadget leg, the field goal. And then Cole Mortensen uh, ends up with go, go, gadget arms, gets the late interception to seal the win for Box Elder. Look, the versatility we talk about, we so often just – assume that box elder just run 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 and they run the ball really well you talk about Dak Sumco he runs the ball really well but you look at an offense that can throw too. Jackson McKee had a receiving touchdown in this game Cole Mortensen he's a great option in that offense they'll run him they'll throw it to him kicker does everything this is a more versatile offense than it gets credit for they get a little revenge over Provo right yeah. having lost yeah. to the Bulldogs in overtime earlier this year and uh, man gutty win on the road LaSaw had two rushing touchdowns for the dog or for the dogs Great year for Provo. It was, a, it was a year where, man, they were right there in a couple of games. Really competitive in Region 9, but season coming to a close here in the second round. Yeah, just a great year for Provo, but uh, to Box Elder, we see that train moving along there, some co and crew. Most wins since 06. Yeah, congratulations. The where they went to the semifinals with Coach Raisler. Yeah. Legendary yeah. track coach there at uh, Box Elder as well uh, as the football team. All right, now to the Resiliency Bowl. Corbin Cottle comes back for Bountiful. <laughs> Orem has Four, or probably five, including a turnover on downs. Turnovers in the first half would trail to 1.17 to seven. Um, they come back to win LR3. L Lance Reynolds, the third. Asher Young was big. Salia Ponga had a touchdown. Yeah. Uh, Bountiful, I mean, and Corbin caught out a 48 yard touchdown run. He ran the ball extremely well, but just could not overcome the wave that came from the Orm Golden Tigers. It's just like last year. Orm goes into Bountiful, gets a win in the second round, 35 25. In this one. And you talk about an Orem group. We mentioned it, right? They always love that 11-12 seed. They're coming in with a ton of momentum. And uh, Sally Paga, look, Moose has him as the top tight end in the state. That yeah. says that we got really good tight ends this year. Yeah. That says something about his skill. Yeah. And you talk about uh, LR3 with uh, multiple passing – or one passing touchdown, one rushing touchdown yeah. in this one. The 21-8 fourth quarter. In a game on the road, they fell down to Bountiful. They come back. They beat Bountiful in the playoffs last year. They do it again this year. And the Orem Tigers looking like the playoff Orem Tigers of previous years. Yeah, they've looked really, really good. Um, and I think they have the 20 yard. There's actually two passing touchdowns there for Lance Reynolds. One oh, to Asher Young, okay, okay. one to the box score is incorrect. But then one to uh, Roger Sally Aponga. But uh, they look great. And again, Corbin Caudill, man. What a warrior. And we talked about it on there. And it's not without anybody else because Satuala has been spectacular. That kid's yeah. going to be a four-star recruit here pretty soon. <laughs> and you know he'll earn that star sooner or later. Yeah. But to see Cottle come back, he ran extremely hard, ran really, really well. Not, not just come back. Come back twice right. from shoulder injuries. Twice yeah. in the same season. I mean, I mean, And 
These are not like, oh, my shoulder hurts, right? <laughs> um, man, the grittiness of this kid, we saw it last year. I mean, he had that span of, what, four weeks where it was over 250 yards yep. each week. Uh, man, uh, awesome fi- junior year. Expected so much of him his senior year, and it would have been there. The injuries obviously took – robbed us all, right, yep. of, of eight, nine good weeks of Corbin Cottle, but still made big impacts for this offense. You know, other players were able to step up, keep the ship moving in the right direction, uh, Love the effort that we saw from him on Friday night, but uh, and had a great start. Pick six early. Looked like it was going to go Bountiful's way, but just couldn't do enough to hold on. Uh, by the way, give me a couple more notes. Bountiful was going to get the ball back down three, had a muff punt, and that led to the game when he won. But it was a big man touchdown. I can't not mention this. Yeah. Big man touchdown. Freddie Fekatoa from Satuwala mm. got it into the 25, 28-25. I had to mention that. Big man with football. We got to give him some love. Um, so great win for uh, Orem. And we thought maybe, just maybe, you get the semifinal matchup. And then Alta goes and gums up the whole works. <laughs> A-L-T-A. Man. A-J-W-K. Man. The Hawks go into Springville, get the first win at Springville, and you might have that note. I do have that note. It's the first time Alta's ever beat Springville. At Springville. Home or away. Wow. A-L-T-A. <laughs> A-J-W-K. How about it? 34-27. I had a little birdie. He knows who he is. Hit me up on Twitter, and he said, hey, look out. Alta's going to get Springville. So he called this shot. It was like on Wednesday. Yeah. He knows who he is. A little birdie was in my ear on that one. But, uh, man, he was he right? Because Alta jumped out quickly in this one. Yeah, they did. 31 nothing that first half, Dusty. How about Matt McKee? I'm not, I hope I'm saying that right. It's not a name we've said a lot this year. Three passing touchdowns to Turner, Flores, and Hansel Foto. And, look, Springville, I mean <laughs> – you get punched in the mouth like that at home, yeah. you know their pedigree. They're going to come back. They do. They make a late run, 21-0 run late, but just not enough to get past the big start by Alta on the road. And my goodness, man, Alta. Wow. It has been such a tough year for Alta. It, it's been a program that we've seen get to Rice Eccles and been so accustomed to them, competing for region championships and making playoff runs the last two years. And this year especially, it just felt like just they had injuries early and – Love it. Yeah. Love the run we've seen from Alta here late. They get the upset over Springville on the road, and here come the Hawks. I know a couple former Hawks are really glad to see uh, Alta go into Springville and get that win. You should have seen Moose Bingham last <laughs> night, by the way, too. I was next to him giving him a score update, and almost fell off the press box. Yeah, Will Dana's got to feel good. Get yes. A little, get, a, get it back from 2017. Yeah. I know Kimball Henstrom was, was – was glad we called the one last one yeah. that was there, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, but congratulations to Alta and Springville. What a run for Will, uh, yes, Ryder Burton and crew, and and, and Walker DD Valetti. I was gonna say one of the best uh rushing seasons for Valetti, yeah. right? I mean, he was the state's leading rusher, but you talk about a guy that just burst on the scene this year, made the most of it. Great year for Springville Region 9 champs, but coming up short. Yeah, going to be a Region 7 matchup, or probably Region 8. Yeah. God, I got to change Come on, numbers. Dusty, get it right. Region 8 rematch, Alta yeah. and Orem. Um, that'll be fun. Uh, East and Timview, you were there. We gave yeah. a quick note earlier. 35-7, Timview all over their longtime rival in East. Yeah, I mean, Dusty, a couple notes out of this one. Do you realize? Well, you do. But how about you guys? <laughs> this was a playoff matchup every year from 2011 yeah. to 2016. Yeah. It really just got disrupted because of 6A, right? right? East back in 5A, and all's back to normal. We get East Timview in the playoffs again. Uh, East had won the last three, but on this night, man, Micah Beckstead, the job he did early, Dusty. I mean, look, East, they're getting hits on him, and he's just slipping through tackles. I love the touchdown run that was just in front of Kyle Whittingham. Rolls over the tackle on the defender, keeps his feet, takes it in. Uh, man, it was an absolute beast of a night from Micah Beckstead. He had a big 80-yarder that they let him – finish off with a three-yard run. Helaman Kasuga looked dialed in, and he had a couple throws that you know were dropped down the field. This could have been worse. 35-7 at the break, that was all that Tim you would really need. The defense completely took away that east ground game, and the offense jumping on him early really made it tough for finding that offensive rhythm that they're so accustomed to doing. Tim View, this looked like the team that we had expectations yeah. of, Dusty, and they're, I felt like in previous years, maybe they peaked a little early. They are peaking at the right time. Tim View played their best game of the year, best half of the year last night. And they need it because you knew if, if, if he's got a little bit of momentum, yep. all of a sudden uh, old Uncle Mo would start wearing uh, the yep. red, white, and blue. Yep. Um, now let's go to their matchup. How about the 5A version of Davis and Riverton? <laughs> Is Wasatch going into yeah. Spanish Fork avenging a region loss 49-42 to at Spanish Fork? Wasatch was all – Tavion Edwards put on a show 
uh, in some places. Uh, look, there were a lot of shows being made in that ball game. How about the night for the quarterback, Matt Kelsey? And let's start with this. Last year, Wasatch had underclassmen everywhere. And it was like, oh my gosh, next year, Wasatch is going to be so good. Mm -hmm. And they all transferred. So you got a whole bunch of guys that it's like, all right, well, I guess we're going to be learning on the job, right? right? And uh, you look at the, the, pro the progress of this program. How about Matt Kelson, 21 of 34, 261 yards, four passing touchdowns. That's not right. It's got to be 361. I probably fat fingered yep. that. That's my bad. Chris Cook, 30 carried, 178 yards, three rushing touchdowns for Cook. He's had a monster year this year for Wasatch. Probably one of the better backs we've not talked much right. about. Chris Cook, that's a name you're going to want to remember. Crew Erickson, 13 receptions, 124 receiving yards, two receiving touchdowns. And Tavion Edwards with a pair of interceptions. I think he's now tied for second in the state Along when it comes to picks. Along with a 35-yard catch. Yeah. I, I mean, look, this was a fantastic night for the Wasps. Tough year in Region 9. They lost to Spanish Fork in the regular season. They gave up a lot of points in this one. Didn't matter. They scored seven more, and they move on. Right. Oh, man. Just a crazy night. Congratulations, Coach Coburn yeah. and to Coach Justin Smith. That was a great year for the Dons, but another time in the playoffs, but they looked around like, man, this is one of those things. But we know one thing. They'll keep their eyes up, and they'll do the work. Yeah. Um, now let's get to the next side of that matchup. Uh, how about the Stallions? Hey, let's get to the state tournament, and Brock Wilson will cool off. <laughs> 90 yards to get this thing started. And it was stands were having to come from behind, but they get this one 36-21 over the Aviators of Cedar Valley. Yeah, and this was this was a Region 7 matchup, right? Yeah, there we go. It was all Stansbury in the regular season. Love the grittiness that we saw from Coach Zabriskie and his boys here from Cedar Valley in this one. They came out, Dusty, they were fighting. Uh, this game was 21-17 at the break. Aviators with the lead on the road. And then Stansbury does what we've seen them do so often, right? Second half, come out, shut down opposing offenses. That offense continues to score points. 19-0 second half for the Stallions in this one. Ezra Harris to Dylan Hamilton three times yes. in the second half. Three times. Old number 20, looking good. Yeah. And Halu had a 42-yard <laughs> touchdown run. He is back. Welcome back. For Welcome the Stallions. back. Welcome back. And this group is running, yeah. Dusty. Running. If those kids even get that reference. But, uh, but welcome back. Yeah, uh, yeah. Matiaki Halu. Um, and a good win. Now, why are we at Olympus? <laughs> you can guess why. You guess why. They go to Brighton because everyone, including a lot of people, said, hey, it would be Brighton and Stansbury in yeah. the quarter. <laughs> uh, Olympus had different plans because they go into Brighton. This game was 14 all for ever until the fourth quarter 14 points put on by coach whitehead's boys as they get the 28 to 20 win upsetting brighton avenging the loss from earlier this year all right so uh in our bracketologies we both picked brighton mm -hmm. but i want to go back a little bit further <laughs> when we did our region picks uh -huh. one of us said olympus you did and one of us looked at him like you be crazy now here's the thing Brighton won region. I got my pick right. Brighton, congratulations. How about the Olympus Titans? Yes. Because it was it was a region schedule where they lost a lot of games. And we talked about the injuries for Olympus, but to be able to get that win over Brighton in the playoffs, this was kind of the team that felt like this is what it could be for Olympus, and they had to fight their way through region. And it, it honestly is one of the – Brighton's not going to say this. It's one of the benefits of having more teams make the playoffs is that, hey, look – you still have something to fight for even if region doesn't go your way, right? right? We're not going to take the top three teams or the top four teams. Everyone's going to get in, and if you're healthy and playing your best football, you have a chance to advance. And Olympus did that. And you look at a group, Nick Brown had three rushing touchdowns. Mosley had a rushing touchdown, the go-ahead or the, the, one, the separator with two and a half to go in the fourth quarter. Olympus, man. I mean, you talk about grittiness. We talked about uh, you know their late win in the season where – it was Luke Bryant having to do everything, and Coach Whitehead has had to kind of mix pieces around. But they're getting guys back and, and starting to look like the Olympus that we thought we'd see in region play. No better timing for the Titans, who are just surging right now. And every week it's like, I don't know if Olympus has the guys to do it this week, and they do. Can't wait to see what this team has ahead of them. Yeah. Uh, just a spectacular win. It's why we're here. That was the yeah. biggest win because we were going to go Davis. Or probably we're going to go Alta. Alta. Alta, because the first time ever with Springville. And then Olympus goes and holds on. I'm like, hey, let's, let's yeah. go to Olympus. Yeah. Let's, let's yeah. hang out here. The, the school with the aquatic center on site. Um, how about Lehigh and Park City? Great year. Coach yeah. Monsego uh, comes to a quick close as Lehigh was all over the minors early and often to run away with this one. 
Yeah, they gave up a touchdown in the fourth, but really held Park City scoreless for three plus quarters. Offense continued to do what it does. Lehigh, it just feels like we don't talk about Lehigh because they're just doing Lehigh things, right? They're just doing exactly what we expect them to do, and that's outscore a lot of opponents. And that defense, we talk a lot about Brousseau, but that is one of the best defenses in the state. Mm -hmm. It is the best defense in 5A, and it's going to be tough for teams to get enough points past them. Yeah, how win. about it? It sets up the Purple Bowl. Hey, This yeah. game should be played at Weber State in the Purple Palace because it is all purple and white and yeah. uh, maybe a little bit of black mixed in there somewhere. But, uh, but it takes us right through 5A and 6A. Yeah. Let's get to our WGU kind of recap of what we're looking things and what we see here. 5A, 6A into the quarterfinals. Some of the matchups might not end up being the sexiest matchups because of some upsets, but man, it sets up, and what we said before, going into this, it still seems a little wide open in both these situations. Well, I guess here's the thing, right? Wide we open, have said- Wide open getting to Rice Eccles. We have said that it feels like these tournaments are gonna be hectic and wide open. Dusty, in 5A, there are three seeds that are top 10 seeds that made it to the quarters. Three. Wow. The one, two, and four are the only seeds that are still playing. Yeah. You've still got a – oh, sorry. Box Elder's a nine. Box My Elder's bad. Nine, yeah. So there's four. Uh, you got a 21 seed, a 23 seed, an 11 seed, and a 19 seed. Half of your bracket's outside the top ten. Let Twitter do what it does about talking about the RPI. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, man. And, and you're going to look at a lot of these. You're going to be like, man, there's no way that a 21 seed is going to play and get a win. Well – I would have thought that last round too. It shows you got to show up on a Friday night, right? Yeah. And you never know. You got to get focused. Got to make certain you play your best effort because on any given night, an underdog can get a win. Yeah, and in 6A, it's interesting. Uh, we say, hey, is this the year for, for Region 4 to drop? Thought maybe Lone Peak. Nope. All Region 4 teams still alive. We'll find out at the, when we do this video next week, will Dusty be right and be a Region 4 semifinal for the second consecutive year? Yeah. Did, did it by accident. We really wasn't planning on it. Um, and then. <laughs> Looking at, do uh, we have someone that's going to jump in from behind? Who's Weber this year? Who's Weber that's going to yeah. get into the state or into the semifinals? We got a couple of options there. Could it be Bingham, my first love? Could it be Farmington? Could it be Farmington? Talk about they kind of went through yeah. some hiccups in region. Just had the one region loss or two region loss. Am I bad? But uh, playing really well. Yeah. What we will know is that semifinals will be set, and folks, our rewind coverage is going to be done in a way that hasn't been done before. We said that last year, and it was true. Well, yeah. we're just trying to expand that in lots of ways. In a way Ryan Stern has, always in all ways, <laughs> uh, we're going to try to do uh, up at Rice-Eccles Stadium. But for Vince Francis and Dane Stewart, I'm Dusty Lister. Thanks for joining us on watching the 6A and 5A bracket. Go check out 3A, 2A, 1A. We go through those as well.